Biden has been signing into law critical race theory, which is wonderful. As Trump, uh, the, the one of the best things that Trump did was to outlaw uh, critical race theory on federal uh, in federal organizations and any corporations that they were being contracted with, which is a stunningly good move for people who aren't racist. In the same way, you'd ban teaching children Nazi ideology. Yes. Yes. For exactly the same reason. Exactly the same reason, exactly the same effects. Just going in the opposite direction. Instead of white people good, brown people bad, now it is brown people good, white people bad. And it's like, okay, can we, can have, we just say people good? Yeah, can we? Yeah, just some people good, some people bad. Just that's m- much more accurate. Mm. So can we not just get, get past this racial politics? But apparently we can't, right? And so I watched uh, Biden announcing this. And uh, some of the things he said now, I just, I just can't stand. Uh, like, advancing equity has to be everyone's job. Okay, thank you, Mr. Totalitarian. If everyone has to do things, that is expressly totalitarianism. Okay, how many people have got planes? Yeah. Don't know. I mean, uh, yeah, where's the equity in you having a private plane, Mr. Public Servant? Uh, how do I get my stacks from China? You know, there are loads of questions that you can, only you can answer, in fact, Biden. Uh, but another one was housing is a right. No, it's not. Uh, and, and we, of course, have to combat the resurgence of xenophobia against... I, I nearly said aliens then, but it's actually Asians that he said. Um but really, like, anyway. Biden. Yeah, it's might Biden. Have meant, he might have meant the other one. He, he may well have done. And were he on a colony, uh, I can't remember the name of the planet that they were on, he would probably have been saying much the same thing. Um, ex- the executive actions uh, direct the Housing Department and Department of Urban Development to take the necessary steps to redress racially discriminatory federal housing policies that have contributed to wealth inequality for generations. He's, what he's going to be talking about Wait. is like redlining in the 70s. Yeah, but he, hasn't he been in office for like 50 years? Yeah, I mean, did, why didn't he do this on, with Obama? Like when he was the vice president? Why did he probably vote for it back yeah. in the day as well? I mean, and, <laughs> and I bet they're not going to find any explicitly racially discriminatory practices. So I don't know. But uh, the next thing, and of course, what the, the, the next thing he did, and this, this is all part of a, a giant culture war that is being waged on the part of the Democrats. And it seems that Biden has become one of the most vocal advocates of this. Now, I just want to be clear. A lot of people are saying things like, well, Biden's just a senile old man. He doesn't know or believe any of this stuff. And it's like, no, I think he does, actually. And he's been uh, preaching the good word against um, white people and English people for quite some time. But we'll get to that in a minute. But anyway, so uh, he's decided to rescind Trump's patriotic education, saying, I'm rescinding the previous administration's harmful ban on diversity and sensitivity training and abolish the offensive counterfactual 1776 commission. Unity and healing must begin with understanding and truth, not ignorance and lies, which is actually outstandingly deceptive given how Biden is the author of many of these lies and what he is protecting in the radical left wing is a font of lies. Now, I'm not, I I didn't look into the 1776 commission, so I don't know what the details of it are, but I'm happy to believe that it is one-sided. Right. It, its fundamental argument is that American history begins in 1776 and it's very patriotically organized yes. and so on and so forth. Uh, which is what I would have expected. Um, and when you say American history, what we mean is the history of the United States of America begins in 1776. Prior to that, it's the English colonies un- under the rule of the king. Um, so, okay, that's fine. That's not lies. It's just telling one story, right? And this was what the New York Times 1619 project was trying to address. They uh, they had created this project to essentially rewrite the narrative of the founding of the United States to take it back more than 150 odd years prior, um, almost 150 years prior, to 1619, which was the arrival of the first black slaves in the English colonies, and mark that as the point of essentially the founding of the United States as it's constituted today. Um, That's ahistorical. That's not true. I mean, that is when black slaves first arrived in the English colonies, but they were not the United States. The United States being an ideological revolution that came a lot later. Um, but th- this this was just roundly, roundly criticised by scholars. I mean, this this is an article by Alan C. Guelzo, a historian and senior research scholar at the Council of Humanities and director of the Initiative of Politics and Statesmanship in the James Madison Programme at Princeton University. So not a nobody, just 
not some rando that I've just got off Twitter, which is what most of their articles are about these days. Uh, he says, The New York Times 1619 project has aimed at nothing less than a revolutionary reinterpretation of the entirety of US history, recentering African Americans as the sole banner carriers of America's principles, even as they have been ruthlessly, ruthlessly smashed down, enslaved, and obliterated from memory by more numerous and more powerful whites. Uh, this is not what he believes to be an accurate retelling of it. Um, as the New York Post reported, this was m just criticised en masse by scholars uh, because essentially it just wasn't true. And uh, despite this, it took the New York Times seven months to admit the problems with the 1619 Project, and even in its correction, it preserves the fundamental lie of its bid to rewrite American history. Uh, scholars of all political stripes, from a variety of disciplines, objected to Hannah Jones's essay immediately on its publication last August, especially this crucial line. Conveniently left out of our founding mythology is the fact that one of the primary reasons the colonists decided to declare their independence from Britain was because they wanted to protect the institution of slavery that is not true at all um in fact the like we've covered before the founding fathers knew that the american revolution would end slavery in the same way that the french revolution ended slavery in french colonies because the principles upon which it was predicated the fundamental rights of the the individual person they knew would be extended to blacks who were currently enslaved and would be complete justification for their emancipation the same justification we use now for opposing slavery so this was all pa part and parcel packaged within the american revolution and they knew it uh, as the new york post says that's a lie pure and simple and the paper still hasn't corrected it it made an important clarification uh, with a new editor's note that explains a passage that has been adjusted uh, namely it added two words the essay says protecting slavery was the main reason that some of the colonists fought to rebel from england name and them. yeah <laughs> sorry name them yeah name them yeah exactly and uh, but yeah no that's that's just not the case it's just not true right and another thing that's just not true is Joe Biden lying, right? Lying about England in particular. Now, this is important because Joe Biden highlights his Irish heritage very constantly. And he seems to have a great deal of animosity towards Britain and England itself. And this accumulates in him spreading lies. Now, this was uh, when he was very, very tepidly on the campaign trail, I believe. Um, but he's, I, I've seen him repeating this many, many times throughout the course of his career. Let's watch this clip. You all know what the phrase rule of thumb means? You know, all these expressions? You know what the derivation of that is? It goes back to not some country that doesn't share our ethnic values or our values, or is different. It goes back to England. In the 13, late 1300s, and those of you who are lawyers are taking a law or taking economic classes in, at college here, there was a thing called, there's a thing called English common law. The way the law evolves in England is not necessarily legislatively, it's the courts continue to have it emerge and change as it goes along. Well, prior in the late 1390s, so many women were dying at the hands of their husband, literally, this is a fact, dying at the hands of their husband, because a woman is considered, and in many cases still, a chattel, just like the horse, the pig, the farm, not a joke, it's a piece of property. Okay, England, not Zambia or you know Zambia or any other England. Now, so many women were dying by beaten to death by their husbands that they passed the rule in the common law courts of England, saying that you could not beat your wife with a rod thicker than the circumference of your thumb. We have inherited a cultural, a cultural depravity. None of that's true. Absolutely not one word of that was true. So, I mean, America, for a start, is a common law country. So America works in the same way that England works when it comes to the law. It's, it's incrementalism based on precedent, which incidentally is why we have such good laws and we don't have weird tyrannical laws like, oh, I don't know, you can beat your wife with, uh, well, uh, what's the Islamic... Uh, so the Islamic standard is you are allowed to beat your wife, but you must not leave bruises and you must not hit the face. There we go, right. So, you know, un unlike our depravity that doesn't allow this, 
Uh, you know, we could have gone for that enlightened view of the way that women should be beaten, as Joe Biden clearly appreciates with his rescinding of the Muslim ban. Um, but this is just not true, right? So, and, and that's the point of the dueling narratives about the origin of America, delegitimizing the good of English ancestry in the country. Um, because, I mean... The rule of thumb is where, not about beating Well, hang on, we'll get to that in a second, right? But wh where, to, where to even begin, right? So, um, for a start... Women in England gained protections under the Magna Carta, right? They could own property from the Magna Carta onwards. And But the thing is, that's just formally in law. Before that, women, of course, still own property. Because if you look back, women were actually not very poorly treated. Like, they, like these these things were all relative. So yeah, compared, <clears throat> compared to what? Yeah, compared to what? But, like, compared to what he's laying out, that's just not true. There was no epidemic of women being beaten to death by their husbands anywhere in the historical record of England that I can find. And it's not like women didn't own property. We've got lots of evidence of women owning property. And it was just that this wasn't put into the common law. And if something isn't introduced into law, something that's causing harm isn't introduced into law, the safe assumption is that that's because it's not happening very much and therefore the issue isn't raising its head. For example, um, I think... Wasn't it in, like, Wales or something that bestiality was only outlawed in the 90s, right? Now, it, it's, it, it's a joke, but the thing is it probably doesn't actually happen very much, so it doesn't need legislation because just no one's doing it. But it was true that in the 17th century that there was a, 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 an addition to the common law that said, look, you can't beat your wife uh, just in case someone was. But even then, like, the rule of thumb, anyone can look this up. The earliest appearance of the, the phrase rule of thumb uh, comes from a Scottish preacher called James Durham. Right, so a this isn't even English. This is Scottish. This is before Britain as well. So this is an independent country back before the EU existed. Uh, but he says many professed Christians are like to foolish builders who build by guess and by rule of thumb, as we used to speak, and not by square and rule. So it's not about the width of a stick that you can beat your wife with. It's about estimating the length of a piece of building material when you're building a house. And of course, you would want to use square and rule because that gives you more accurate measures. And so if you've, you know, I need to get a plank of wood that's five feet long or something, and you cut it four and a half feet, that plank of wood is not only insufficient, but it's wasted. So it's about building efficiency. Right? <laughs> so it's, it's nothing... At any in any way connected to beating women. Common law was not used in Scotland at this time, but common law did not permit the beating of women. Joe Biden is a goddamn liar, and I think he's a goddamn liar because he's a racist. I think he's trying to delegitimize the, the moral good of America's English inheritance, despite the fact that he lives within it even now. He doesn't even understand it, it seems. <laughs> <laughs> 